Evolutionary.org Hardcore 2.0 coming your way. This is episode 103. Today we're going to talk about PharmaCool blend options and how to use them. So this is going to be a really fun one to do. So uh, Mobster and I, look, we're going to go over several things. We're going to go over blend facts and thoughts on blends because Mobster, oh, you know, Mobster has his, his opinions, his strong opinions on this stuff. And a lot of people love to hear our opinions on this stuff. Look, we're going to talk about why people use blends. That's the bottom line in this podcast. We're going to talk about the pharmacal blend options that they have. And there's a really cool list of stuff, some stuff I've never heard of even, that are popping up these days from pharmacal. And, um, yeah, we, I mean, this is some cool stuff that they have. You'll be shocked at some of the options they have. And then we're going to talk about some, you know, stacks that we like to, to use for blends. And then we're going to talk about why we trust pharmacal. So let's start with blend facts and thoughts to start out. So what, let me just go over, you know, what is a blend? And I'll let Mobster come in here with his thoughts on that. And so basically, look, in the old days, everyone said, you know, back when I first started using them 20 years ago, everyone would say, oh, you got to run one steroid for your first cycle. You got to run one steroid for your second cycle. Then your third cycle, you could do two. Maybe throw in an oral to kickstart things. Maybe throw in an oral to finish things. Third cycle, then you can start mixing, you know, two, three steroids, three, two, three, three and you got to work your way up. That's That was the cliche. Yeah. Now, a lot of people still do that, and there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Does it have to be that way? No, I don't think no. so. You can run your first cycle. You can mix things. It's not the end of the world. If you know what you're doing, then, you know, you can have a successful cycle whether you mix things or, or not, or you can run this one steroid by itself and have a successful cycle, or you can do it. And in both ways and have a not successful cycle. So really at the end of the day, what, what we started to do back in those days is so what ended yeah, up so happening was is look, we ended up um at that time blending our own steroids. We would mix our own steroids. We started noticing back 20 years ago, look, when we mixed steroids in the same syringe it would cut down post-injection pain it would cut down on the volume of injecting it would cut down you know the days we would have to inject so it became advantageous to start mixing steroids so in a lot of ways there's an advantage to doing this so then what would ha started happening is these underground labs started getting demands from people hey can you blend this with that can you blend that with this and then um brands started coming around these underground labs and they started thinking up with the idea, the brilliant idea to do it on their own. Let's put our own blends together and let's start doing it. Now, pharmaceutical companies had already started doing this. Sustanon, for example, which is one of the ones we're going to talk about on this podcast. Um, yep. The pharmaceutical companies would put together a blend of four testosterone options and they call the Sustanon 250. And that was yep. basically what it was. So they've been doing this already but underground labs have taken it to another level. And what's cool about Pharmacool is they not only do different injectables together, but they, they also do an AI. There's a blend that we're talking about that includes an AI. So they do some really cool stuff to really save you money and also to do the work for you where they're doing the blends instead of you. So Mobster, yeah, touch on it. Yeah, I mean, look, sometimes when we talk about this kind of subject, People forget that Sustanon is a blend when obviously it is. I mean, another one that's super common, Steve, and we've got a product like that in, included in our list today is Tritrin. A bunch of companies do Tritrin, which is obviously different combinations of S's of uh, Trinbolone, right? So let's just look at the Sustanon. We've discussed Sustanon in and of itself, uh, literally done a podcast where the whole subject or certainly a good proportion of that podcast was talking about Sustanon. We said, listen, the issue was a person goes to the hospital, they've got, say, for example, really bad burn, Steve, and we need to get something in there to prevent uh, muscle breakdown. We need to help them heal from the burn. And so we've got a bunch of medical treatments that we were doing. The problem was if you use a, sl a slow acting ester, something that had a half-life of a week or two weeks or whatever else, the argument for medical treatment was that this would take a certain amount of time to get into the system and you didn't want to have other bunch of medical issues going on with regards for example giving them thousands of milligrams just so it starts to work straight away so i mean i'm oversimplifying it obviously for the purposes of illustration but the argument then became a slow and medium 
a medium long and then a long acting ester. So they literally got something that was starting the treatment straight away, working in a few days, working in a week, working in two weeks. And that meant they started the heal pretty much, all things being equal, more or less straight away. So we, we kind of almost forget that Sustanon, as I say, is, is multiple products, multiple esters. We almost forget with the trend fans, almost that like, oh, I used to try trend, and it said so easily, it slips off the tongue so easily that we forget it's a combination of products. So the argument regards what Steve said is also true. It used to be the case, and I've even argued this kind of in the past, right? The argument is thus. Not every single ester of testosterone, not every single uh, steroid, full stop, has worked for me or for Steve. I know, for example, that I've tried halo testing as an oral uh, for my powerlifting, for my strength training. Didn't seem to see much from it. Same thing with Anadrol. I know people have used it and absolutely raved about it, being a be and end all. Never seem to get anything out of it. And on multiple shows, I've talked about testosterone in Amphate, that my buddies loved as a foundation for them for a strength cycle, for their strongman training. I was doing my grip stuff, and I'm like, meh, it's okay, but it didn't really sort of feel like it was working for me. Yeah, I've talked about the products. So I do like Sastol and Decker is an absolutely amazing bulker for me. Nearly always get great results on D-Bolt, nearly always get great results on Anifar. So there's an argument to be made for trying certain products out to see if they work for you. The problem with that, as Steve says, is ironically, in order for that kind of plan to be good, you'd have to try them one at a time. And I'm, I'm reminded of the famous meme of a certain lady in in, in, in uh, rough parts of America. Who, who's got time for that? No one's got time to literally work their way for every goddamn steroid from A to Z. Multiple this, single that, and so it's ridiculous. So what do we do? We look at the common denominator. We look at What's worked for most people? And we are now at the stage in terms of IT, in terms of information feedback from users, from customers, from looking at way the products sell, all that kind of information. So, for example, Steve and I can quite simply say on a regular basis, Anavar is great for strength. It works for 50 milligrams. d bowl works for 95% of the users. They're all going to get bulk up. It's good at 30 to 50 milligrams a day and so on and so forth. So you're kind of taking away much of the guesswork. We can even look at some studies that have actually used forms of testosterone at close to PED amounts. I think one was 600 milligrams and so on and so forth. So we can start to look at that information and we can have feedback from hundreds of thousands of users, Steve, hundreds of thousands. We know that millions of people that have used PEDs have used Debo. That's no exaggeration whatsoever. So we start to get into that kind of stuff. We could argue the, the toss about scoring systems and, and how something's been rated and whatever else. And, of course, again, like myself, like Steve, there will be stuff that we prefer over other things. And, and, and once we get into the science, we know when stuff's working, when it shows in your bloods. And Steve, for example, way more than I have, has seen blood tests, seen results when people have used organ protectors, seen results when people have used straightforward bends. I, for example, and one of the products we're going to discuss today is called Fast Rip. I've used a very similar product, and pretty much every UGL that I've seen has something very, very similar to this, if not identical. And I know for a fact that even though it's relatively a small amount, it's all kind of short esters, and I got benefits from it. And I think that would be very, very common. The, listen, this is a great example here, Steve. Regardless of what a UGL can do in order to produce blends of different ratios and numbers of whatever else, if it didn't work, they wouldn't sell it. You don't get to last in the business if you're producing a product that no one's getting good results from or a very small percentage of people getting good results from. So when we start to look at products like that, we can generalize. We can say this is going to work for 80, 90, 95% of people. There'll be the odd 5% where you, you get something from it, but it wasn't great, even when everything else was in place. So we can start to do that. And if if we started to get into specifics, it'd be literally, oh, Joe can use it, but John can't, and it'd be a little bit silly. So indicative numbers, results that we've seen that are common, and these are the reasons why these blends put together. It's not literally a chemist or a lab showing off what they can do, because we've talked about this before. You could put ridiculous amounts in a milliliter, and it wouldn't dissolve. You could put 14 different tiny amounts of steroid into a milliliter, 
and it'd be like kind of pointless. You have to produce something that's going to be effective for the majority of users, reduces the minimum amount of post injection pain or none whatsoever. And over time, with diet, with training, with everything else in place, produces results or it won't sell. It isn't much more complicated than that, Steve. It's a little bit like producing a car that goes 500 miles an hour that no fucker can drive. Pointless. Looks great. Sounds great. The numbers are amazing, but no fucker can get in and it's uncontrollable. You need to, especially when we're talking about chemicals and putting products into the body. So ultimately, all these blends will have some foundation in working, working in a majority of people, being post-injection pain uh, free or nearly free and useful. And again, the other thing that Steve mentioned, and I think this also applies here, there is zero, absolutely nothing to stop you going off, buying single source ingredients, putting that product together yourself in your inner needle, in a syringe, changing as you go through the cycle as a way of experimenting what works and what doesn't work for you, finding something that's uniquely good for you and, and going ahead. But I would argue that the finance stuff that C says it's saving you money is also true. Quite simply, if I buy, for example, uh, I'm looking here at testase, prop, phenylpropionate, cypionate, and decanate in one product, which we'll get to, and I went and bought five 10 mil vials and use a little bit of everything from those five vials versus buying the product in question, the multi Esther 400. It's got to save me some money, Steve. I'm just looking at the numbers, and off the top of my head, I think it's roughly half price. The average price per 10 mil uh, on the site that we use as a reference versus buying this product with these different esters in, these different forms of testosterone in, and the price that they're asking for. And I think the difference is between $300 and $120. So you're saving $180 just producing the same product for you. They've done the work. They've got the mechanisms. They've got the machinery. They've got the lab set up. You haven't had to do it. And if, you, if, for example, you was a home brewer, you've got all oh, that aggravation, never mind. You'd have to buy a minimum amount of raws just to produce it. So it becomes ridiculously complicated just to get something. And listen, Steve, even if you wanted to do that and you use a multi-ester product like this, you can still add something to the vial, to the syringe. That's a little bit more of something that you wanted to. So you can still use a blend and then just manipulate the blend for your personal preference. That will come from experience. There will be specific things that you particularly want, and maybe you wanted to go with one lab, but it didn't quite have the product you want. So you still got that flexibility. What do you think on that before we move on? So let's talk about a little bit of, of the disadvantages you know, of using blends. And look, if you're not familiar about how each compound works, then it might come, it might be a disadvantage because think about it. If you're using a blend, that contains some testosterone, some masterone, and primo, and you use it. And you don't know what you're reacting good to. You don't know what you're not reacting good to. Because if, unless you've used these steroids before, you're like, man, I'm getting good results on this plan. Well, is it because of the primo that you really like, or is it because of the masterone you really like? Because in the future, if you if it if it's just the primo that you like, then in the future maybe you'll use more primo and less testosterone. If it's a masteron you like, same thing. Maybe you use a little more masteron and a little less test, or vice versa. Maybe you like the test, a little more test and a little less masteron, or or a little more test, a little less primo. So you're not gonna know by by using a blend. So and another thing is you, you lose the flexibility of changing the ratios where you have control of how much each steroid is going to your body. Let's say you're you're going to do a photo shoot or a vacation or a competition and you're going into the competition and you want more masteron going into the competition. You want more of that hardening effect. Well, with the blend, if you increase the dose of the blend, well, you're also increasing the dose of the testosterone along with the masteron. You see? So you don't have that flexibility of being able to control each thing. So if you're a control freak like I am, yeah. Sometimes yeah. blends work against you. So in that situation, and that's why some people really hate blends. We see people on the forum, they just will not use a blend. They hate blends. I'm not like that. I'm flexible enough to where I have no issues using a blend. But I, you know, sometimes I like to have that flexibility. So you can always add in more master on on top of the blend. So that kind of solves that little issue right there if you want to go that direction. So it's not the end of the world when it comes to using blends. Now, some people don't mind it at all. 
and they want to save money and time with using a blend. And as Mobster said, if you're saving 60% per vial on the same amount of gear and you're putting the same amount of gear in your system as you would if you would have bought each individually, then it's a no brainer just to go ahead and buy the blend and save up to 60% of what you're doing. Also, there's a segment of people out there, whether it be a psychological thing, maybe there is some science space behind it, which I think could be a combination of both, which really believe the synergy of using a blend the you know, as you go, just different steroids hitting your body at the same time creates this synergistic effect where they bounce off, off, off of each other. And they're able to give you better results that way because they're hitting your system at the same time. They're surprising your body. It's a psychological effect. So some people really believe in that too, mobster. And I see people that absolutely insist on always at minimum using two or three steroids at the same time, usually three or four steroids. And we see these pro bodybuilders who you see their cycles, they're running like eight, nine different steroids. So for them... It makes perfect sense if you like to use a lot of different steroids at a lower dose rather than just sticking to two or three steroids at a high dose in their case, or in your case, one or two steroids at a moderate dose, go with a blend where you can blend things together and that gives them more of a synergistic effect. It's like the witch's pot where the witch blends in a bunch of things or it's like a gumbo soup where you put in a yeah. bunch of stuff in yeah. there. You don't even know how many things. You have a hundred different things in that soup <laughs> together. It's like a Cajun thing. And then it yeah. comes out and it tastes good. We don't know why it tastes good. I've been in New Orleans once. I had some gumbo. It tastes, it's a good soup. But can I put my finger on the ingredient that's yeah. making it taste yeah. good? I can't because it's just a big mix. So it's the same thing. Some people really like that and it really works out good for them. So look, at the end of the day, it's all about experimentations. And I could tell you, that professional bodybuilders do use blends. That's just the fact. We see it all the time. And they'd rather use a blend of sustenon, which is four different esters of testosterone, then separate the four different esters and you pin them each together. It's a no-brainer yeah. in that situation. So really let me give you another let me give you another four and against, Steve. So a, a four would be less pinning. Yeah. You haven't got to mix stuff up. You haven't got to do multiple injections, which is a huge issue for professional bodybuilders, especially in contest prep. And anything that reduces the amount of pinning has got to be good. Uh, can you mix things together in a, a, a thing? I do that all the time, Steve. My sus deco side, I've literally got a syringe loaded right now for the next couple of days. Every five days, I'm, I'm injecting sus and deco on this cycle, only for another week or so, and then I'm finishing. And there is one mil of each product in the valve right now, in the syringe right now. So... Anything that reduces pinning has got to be good. The problem also from the competitive point of view is that we tend to be looking at milliliters, <laughs> multiple milliliters per day, uh, which is a lot of syringes and changing needles and pins and whatever else. I think the other argument also is going to be um, all companies are producing single products as well as blends. So you have, as Steve said, that, that degree of flexibility. Ultimately, I mean, th there is sometimes a kind of skewed logic to most people's cycles, especially once you've done it a little time, a little bit. So you can do what I said already, which is go off and look at the science such as it is and the experience of many, many thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, or even millions of users and go, you know, reasonable things. If I'm not an absolute freak of nature, if I'm not the completely unique, there should be this kind of response based on all the, re the response or results that all these other users had or I can do what the hell I like. And that's the reason why you have single uh, ingredient products available and blend products available. And I think there's an, even an argument to be made, and it, and it still means you don't have to try every steroid there is. You can start cycles a certain particular way. You can have short circles change halfway through. You can do things at the finish. So, for example, you could literally start single source ingredient type products at the beginning, go to a blend in the middle, where uh, the end, the middle result, the, the, the middle four weeks of a 12-week cycle, it doesn't matter too much. Here's me doing a, a high volume of product, but it's in all the work's been done for me. It's 400 milligrams a milliliter, and then switch back to single source, single ingredient type uh, steroids at the end, purely and simply because you want to produce a certain result. For example, like Steve said, you know, I might have a, a mass part, a cutting down part, and then a shredding part. 
and the shredding, I really want the flexibility being able to take stuff in and out. And I can't do that with a blend because I want to produce that look, for example, for a modeling gig, for a competition, whatever else. And this is, again, why we would see that. I think we would way more likely to see blends at the beginning of the competition cycle for most users and way more likely to see short arrestor single ingredient type products at the end of a competition cycle, especially if I'm newly working with a prep coach or something like that and producing that stage look. I don't want anything long acting in there that's going to make me hold water. I want short arrestors. And so, for example, like I said, I've, I've seen 16 to 21 weeks as a contest prep, and there's literally three, sometimes four stages to that preparation. And the last week will always be short acting single ingredient type products. So, again, it's not everybody on our forums when we talk to the forum members is competing, but some are. Uh, there might be, for example, a few handful, myself included, of uh, people that train specifically for strength. I might want to have certain particular things. I, I'm one of the heavier ones. Most of the other uh, members on the forums are body weight restricted, so they can't be too big. They have to they have a limit they can get to in terms of their body weight. And again, if they're holding water, they might want to lock that. They might have to do certain things. How how much ahead of time can they weigh in for a competition and then put on a little bit of weight in the next 48 hours if it's an early? Loads of different things. And this is the reason why we give specific advice in the, uh, those instances. And again, that might be the reason why that particular user is using a particular product at a certain time. But I'll go back to the comment I made earlier on, Steve. There's a lot of back and forth. And you and I could debate one way or the other, which is better. Uh, but we've all used blends at some point. We've all used single source products at some point. And ultimately, as an example, going back to the Sustanon again, Steve and I did a show where we talked about the top 10 selling, selling, selling steroids pretty much ever. It was based on a survey of thousands of users. It was the previous year's numbers. And every single steroid that we expected to see in the top 10 was there. And Sustanon was in that top 10. So people were using blends. I would argue that pretty much the rest was either TRT or single source ingredients. And again, companies will produce what sells. Uh, and I guarantee you, for example, there's not a steroid company out there that doesn't sell some amount proportionately of d some amount of Vanavar, some amount of testosterone, CPNA. And uh, uh, the ratios might be slightly different from company to company. Those three single source ingredient type products are probably the top five sellers they've ever had. In Amphay, testing Amphay, trend. That's, that's six already. And then, then we would start to see stuff so and a couple of other blends start to creep in. Every single company I've looked at has a fast rip type product in there. So these sell for a reason. And I would argue that that reason is for the most part, in the great and vast majority of users, they work. But of course, as we discussed on other shows, the ability for you to buy what you want based on your success in the past, potential success in the future, is, is their flexibility. Well, we're discussing blends today. We're not saying to you, you've got to use a blend. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I've gone way away, like I told you on another show, Steve, and we discussed the other day, bringing the memory up, saying uh, we were talking about how many podcasts we've done on one particular part. And we said, look, I used to be very fixed on the old idea that you couldn't change the cycle as planned. And that didn't make any sense to me. If I was working with a client and he's competing, why would I have him do the wrong thing that's great for him to bulk at the beginning, but not to cut down at the end? Absolutely, you need flexibility. So, yeah, these products are out there. They're available for you to use, but you get to make the choice. All we can do is give you information about how we'd use them, how common blends are really. Again, the Sussman 250 example. And, again, if you do know what works for you, if you have looked at the way that these products have been put together, if you are happy with the results that you've had in the past, then you look at a company like Pharmaco and you go, do you know what? They've done the work for me. I think the only thing I will say, and Steve touched upon this earlier, just to finish this segment, was we looked at a couple of companies, including Pharmaco, where we go, wow, what, what, what is this? Something unique. For example, one of the products that we've got here today, Steve, I think it's got five esters in. And we're going, okay, what the hell? We've never seen products like this before. So some of these products are unique to this particular company. And again, it's, well, uh, they must have been asked. They're not producing it for shits and giggles. They're not producing it for show off. They're producing it because there was a demand for it. They've seen users doing cycles like this. They've seen people put together these blends themselves using single source ingredients and had results. 
and so PharmaQuo has done the work for those users where this product is available for them to use. Back to you. Yeah, so let's get into uh, the different Pharmaco blend options, Mobster. And uh, there's some interesting ones. And some of the ones on here, um, you know, I had to really like dig into them. I was like, what the hell is this? But let's go over each of them. And remember, uh, the Pharmaco has excellent individual steroids. So they don't just have blends. They have also individual steroids. So check them out. But it also check out their blends, you might find something that really, really interests you that you're going to be able to, to get good results on. So let's let's touch on yeah. some of the blends here. So the first one we have here is called Andro Bolin 400. And this is an interesting one. This contains test enanthate 200 milligrams, Masteron E enanthate 100, and then the Primo enanthate 100. So it's got half of it is testosterone, a quarter of it is the Masteron, and a quarter of it is the Primo. So this is a good one to stack together if you want to do like a recomping slash lean muscle gainer. And yes. this is a good one if you like to, you know, like to have testosterone as half of what you're injecting. So a lot of you out there, you insist on having Masteron, I mean, uh, testosterone as your base. So this is perfect for you if you love having testosterone as a base or you're someone who's been on TRT and you want to do something different. So what you could do is stop your TRT that you're taking and go on this blend because the blend contains enough testosterone where it would be more than enough for your TRT, uh, what you the testosterone you're using for your TRT. So if you were to do two, well, let's say you do one CC twice a week. So Throughout the week, you'd be getting 400 milligrams of testosterone, 200 milligrams of the Masteron, and 200 milligrams of the Primo. So the bulk of this that you'd be putting in your body, half half of it would be total the testosterone. So I would see this as a good lean muscle stack. So and then the what's cool, the Masteron and the Primo kind of act like your anti-estrogens because they will help bring down that anti-estrogen effect. Uh, the, the the estrogen that have had going up from the testosterone. So it kind of acts as your AIs. So that that's pretty cool. So I I I'd go with this if you want lean muscle mass and a nice quiet cycle that for someone who likes testosterone. That's how I would use this. How about you, Mobster? Yeah, I'm just thinking of the recomposition comment that you made as well. You're holding on to muscle tissue with the primo. We've talked about the way that uh, 70s and uh, early 80 bodybuilders would use Primo when they were dieting or cutting down from the bulk in the off season. And they would use it when their numbers of steroids that were accessible to them at those times were somewhat restricted. So we said that Primo was great for holding onto muscle tissue while you're cutting. And if you're doing a recomposition, your your diet should be should be hardcore. Uh, you could, for example, Steve, I'm thinking of the, the popularity of the carnivore diet where you're restricting your carbs and to some degree your fat from from other sources and trying to get the majority of your nutrition from 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 nuts and, and meat. That's pretty much kind of it. So for example, in that situation, something that holds on to muscle tissue while you're re recomposition by getting lean and at the same time allows for a little bit of muscle being added, for example in the testing amp fate, works for me. And again, something I've said about um and, and pretty much a prize across the board is they've been one or two exceptions of the nine products that we've got listed. It's, these are high volume 400 milligrams, so it's 300 milligram plus, and one of the product I believe is 500 milligrams, ironically the next one, and you're looking at issues in the past with post injection pain. It used to be in a situation I've argued, quoting Rich Piano, if it was possible, why didn't Rich, why didn't pharmaceutical companies? Do it and yet ironically in the last few years I've changed my mind again purely simply because the feedback from users bright using labs with high volume uh, milligram per milliliter type products has been very good the companies are using but oils all the time post injection veins cut down the quality of production has gone up uh, the benzoyl alcohol ratios have been on point and the feedback is it used to be anything over 350, 400, 450, 500 milligrams, you were going to get some degree of discomfort. The percentage of people that are getting discomfort now, for example, in the Andro Bolan 400 product is tiny, less than 5%. That means 95% plus will inject this product. It saves on having to buy a product, let's say 200 or 250 or even 300 milligrams per milliliter. So more volume of product going in 
and, le and, and less discomfort, less issues. So again, the work's been done for you and you aren't having to pin either more volume or more frequently to get the same levels of volume, Steve. I'll move on to the next one here, and it's called ETT 500. I read the boldenum and decanate, Steve, 200 milligrams. Test in amphate, 200 milligrams. Trend in amphate, 100 milligrams. And looking down the list, this is the highest dose product they produce. And again, looking at this product there, Steve, I would actually argue, again, recomposition, but because of the bowling arm, for example. What are we looking at here, Steve? Well, I would say this was more of a lean gainer slash cutter type product versus, for example, bulking. Uh, the training amphate is a reasonable level around 100 milligrams. It's longer acting, so you shouldn't get too many of the train issues, even with the 500 milligrams per milliliter, because the other two uh, ingredients are of a reasonable level and again, the ratios here look quite good. What would you use this product for, Steve? Or, or how would you have a client yeah. use this? So ETT, the E stands for equipoise. And then the T's stand for testosterone trend, as my officer said. That's why they came up with the idea for ETT as a name. So this is for people who like equipoise and testosterone with a dash of trend. So this would be good for more moderate muscle gains and strength. You can use it for recomping too. So dosing it like the first option, one cc twice a week would be solid for most people. So that's how I would kind of approach that one. Um, so, yeah, I like it. I like this stack a lot. And a lot of people, yeah. um, for those of you, I'm not a big fan of using testosterone with trend as much as other people, especially higher testosterone than trend. I like to keep my tests low on trend or keep it out of the cycle. But some people like to add it now. With this cycle, with the equipoise included, you can expect some really good gains. Like you can, I, you know, you can get really good gains on this on this cycle. Really, really good gains. If you if something you, else, Steve. I mean, you work your ass two. off in the gym and you're getting good sleep, you'll see some big gains on this one. So this one, I would go, I would go on this one, ten or twelve weeks. Um, you're gonna have to push it a little bit because the bold and has got that long ester. So it's going to take a while to really kick in. And it's just two mils, Steve. Two mils is 1,000 milligrams a week. That is probably the least amount of pinning and volume of product that you'd need to put in to get great results if yeah. you're diet, if you're training the wrong So place. if you're and doing... Again, lean gains here, Steve. Lean gains. So if you double up, you know, if you're doing out of the 500, so you do 1,000 milligrams total. So now you're getting 400 milligrams of the equipoise, 400 milligrams of the testosterone, and 200 milligrams of the, te of the trend. So you're still keeping the trend lower than the average. Dose. Usually people run anywhere from 300 to 350 milligrams of trend and they yeah. get really, uh, you know, side effect issues. So you're keeping the trend low on this one. So this yes. gives you the flexibility to run the cycle a little longer and not feel like you're dying because on trend toward the end of a, every trend cycle I've done, and I, I've usually run it at least 250 so usually by the end, by week seven, week eight, I feel like oh, I'm ready to come off of this. So this one gives you the ability to push it a little longer. You're going to have to because of that long EQ ester. So next one is kind of the opposite of that. This is fast rip. And this one, I have a lot of clients who actually come to me who really like this one. They're like, Steve, I want to mm -hmm. run the fast rip. And this has test pro 50, trend E 50, and dross P, which is master on 50. So this is a good stack for recomping. Um, and the thing about this one is it kicks in fast because of the short esters. Yeah. So, um, and then the trend. I've, I've, I've used a very similar product, Steve, and I'll tell the listeners now, as, as, as I said, there's a bunch of companies producing more or less an identical product in this example. Not everything, because we discussed some unique products. But in the case of the Fast Rip, I've used a more or less identical product. Uh, I believe I was doing circa four mil a week. So, 600 milligrams, I think it was a slight little bit over because of the numbers of the times and the days apart between pins, et cetera, et cetera. And talked about recomping and a belt size going down and the results I've had on it. And again, companies producing products like PharmaQ here uh, that work for people. So for me, more cardio, better diet. I think I kept the training more or less the same and Everything else was on point, and I went from 327 down to 320, back up to 327. It was in a four-week cycle, very short cycle, 
and kept the belt size down. So my stomach stayed down on this particular almost identical product, Steve. So for me, the idea of using it, knowing that it works full well for me, not being quote unquote a trend lover and still yet getting great results and still seeing the effects of trend for me. If I and I know how I know how I felt. So for me, I could see that this is a product that I could see me using again and at some point in the future. If I ever wanted to cut again, if I ever wanted to try that just to see what kind of results I get. So I'm not a typical user of this product, but I've got great results on a product, almost identical to this thing. So me for, for me, this would be absolutely fabulous. And the fast rip, the specific fast part of it. Short arrest is in, short arrest is out. The flexibility again, and I did four weeks. If I don't run it for six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks, that's really good for a lot of people. The idea that you can get the shape quickly if you don't mind the hardships of the extra cardio, if you're really, really good with your diet, and you're not crazily out of shape, you can just about make out your abs. The idea that you can have a full-blown six-pack serratus, those little intercostal muscles popping, and you've got a product at least that does that for you, for me, it appeals. And I'm sure it would appeal to a great many users being able to get in shape that quickly. What do you think on that, Steve? Yeah, I just want to make sure it's a trend A, it's not trend E. I don't know why it was written on here as trend E. So obviously it's trend A's, it's all short S, there's probe and trend A. So just want to make that clarification. And yeah, it's going to be in your system quicker and out of your system quicker. So this is great for people who want to keep the cycle eight weeks or lower. So next one's a little interesting. It's a multi-ester 400. And this is basically similar to Sustanon, but on this one, they added a testosterone acetate to it. So it's got the probe, the phenylpropionate, and it's got also, instead of the ISO, it's got test SIP, and then it's got the test decanoate. So it's a really interesting blend, and they added a long, an extra long ester, and they added an extra short ester to give you 400 milligrams instead of the typical 250 with Sustanon. So this is a cool testosterone blend. It's like Sustanon, but they switched a couple things out, and 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 they they switched. Um, the ISO out, put test sip, and then they added test acetate on top of it. So you've got five different esters to this one. So if you'd like Sustanon, you think it's Sustanon is a cool one, then you'll like the, you'll love the multi-ester 400. And this one, you can use one CC every two or three weeks. You mm. can do this one for your TRT. You can do this one. There's a lot of different ways you could run this at 400. So if you wanted to do, let's say, 200 milligrams a week of TRT, or you're running a really long cycle, a 14, 16 week cycle, you could do one injection every two weeks with this one. And you would feel some of the effects because it does have acetate and propanate and phenylpropanate in it, small amount, yeah. but it's mostly long ester. So you have to keep in mind that it's going to, as things go on, it's going to take six, seven, eight weeks for it to finally peak in your system. So this would be a good option for those of you who do self TRT to kind of experiment with this one. Um, Maybe even Steve the uh, quote unquote sports TRT that some people seem to like. And again, it's that thing of what's the other thing that we sometimes see with certain users. They they like uh, enough of an ingredient here, and again, that would be the short resters where they can feel the effects working. The idea that you haven't got to use a Kickstarter suits a lot, great many people. I want to feel the product working. I like to feel the idea that. I'm, once I'm on cycle, I'm getting results immediately. And, of course, you've still got the longer acting esters to give them the actual foundation, the, the meat and potatoes of their steroid stack, so to speak. So that's, that's that kind of sort of psychological aspect that Steve mentioned right at the beginning of the show that certain people like to have reasons for them using the short resters versus the longer resters. And as I say, for me, it's one of those things I always argue sometimes in that situation, Steve, I don't need to, that's me specifically, I don't need to feel a product working at the beginning. I'm only interested in the end results. And I think that argues for strength training, whatever you want to call that, and or bodybuilding purposes. How you look at the end of the cycle, how strong you are at the end of the cycle should matter. I think there's an argument to be made in terms of the feel good factor of, say, for example, d -bowl or the sense of well-being that perhaps some users get when they're on TRT. And even, even just a libido. So there's things like that where you've paid your money, you're doing your cycle, and the idea that you can feel it working straight away appeals to a great many people. Uh, again, realistically speaking, 
Um, that's not necessary, but it appeals to some people. So that's another reason why people might use a product like this with the short arresters kicking in straight away. They can quote unquote feel it working, which is not really every single user. That's a small percentage of users. But for most people, whether you're competing in strength or bodybuilding, whether you're doing a modeling gig, whether you're getting ready for the beach, how you look, how you how strong you are at the end of the cycle is probably the bigger argument. And that's the reason why most of the short arrestors are all relatively short in terms of small amounts. And then the, the longer arrestors are much, much bigger amounts. As Steve says, probably about 60, nearly 70 percent of the product there is the longer arrestors. So those people are definitely covered as well. And again, a lot easier than having to do a, a single source type in a stack with single ingredients and having to have a Kickstarter just to get that sense of feeling that some people want. Even, even having a, a, a relatively small but little bit of a result straight away, just so that they can not feel it and see it working, Steve. And that is also down the time scale. How much time have you got? We see too often people that need, have given themselves not enough time to get into shape versus obviously mo way better having longer preparation time making it easier on yourself rather than having to kill yourself because you've only given yourself six weeks, eight weeks to get in shape and you've let yourself get too out of shape. So there's stuff like that going on all the time. And again, that's the reason why people pick certain products over other products, over single source products and so on. On to the next one, Steve. Um, there's a product called TRT Formula. And ironically, as I said to Steve in the pre-show, there was a bit of back and forth between me and Steve and I'd actually seen a member of the forums discussing an almost identical product. I'm actually thinking it is this product specifically. So this is Testipinate 200, which is probably El Numero Uno, maybe number one, number two with testing Amphate for most people that are self-TRT in there, Steve. With a little bit of Androstrozole, I want to say that properly, 0 0.5 milligrams. I, I had a bit of a back and forth with Steve here because we're saying about most people using the TRT product specifically thinking when it's been medically prescribed and you're being monitored and having your bloods done, for the most part, we're really looking at most people not wanting to include an AI, simply because you are just replacing the production that you used to have of your own natural testosterone with an additional testosterone from outside. So if you get that right, if your numbers are good, especially if you're being monitored, it's very rare to see an AI. Now, there is a small percentage of users that doctors will still prescribe an AI for. These might be people that are especially sensitive to estrogen issues, water retention, blood pressure, and so on and so forth. And that's the reason why you pay a lot more money for the blood test and having a, a, a doctor monitor it. But for the most part, and I'll use myself as an example again, straightforward testosterone CPNA, 200 milligrams a week. You can actually go less than that, of course. 100 to 120 to 150 is typically what we see prescribed, sometimes a little bit less, but around those numbers. Up to, for, again, most people that are now self-TRT, I would argue probably, Steve, the biggest number, the most common number would be 200 milligrams, and all things being equal, not including AI. So what do you think about this product, and maybe what, what would you think the reason is for including an AI in the product? Yeah, so it's just as simple as we talked about earlier. You basically killing two birds with one stone. This way, some people forget to take their AI. They just want it to be more simple. Boom, you just inject. It's already included. So it's it's kind of cool. I think it would be good. This one would be good for self-TRT. Um, if you're running it a little higher, then um, you're doing more of a sports TRT effect. Yes. And most anti-aging yes. clinics out there, they do that anyway. They want to put you on testosterone. They want to put you on AI. They want to put you on ACG. They want to put you yeah, on that, peptides. That's the <laughs> so, I mean. That's the truth, Steve. A lot of these clinics are doing exactly what Steve said. And, and, and we've talked about this on other shows where we say they, they, they want to cross-sell you as many different things as possible. I actually think Steve's exactly right when he talks about the sports TRT. What, what, what we argue back and forth, the debates on the forums with regards to what is proper TRT dosing, and I've even said between 90 and 120 milligrams a week seems to be incredibly common when it's prescribed to you by a doctor, when you're being monitored, when you're having bloods, versus what we talk about in terms of self-TRT, which saves you guys an absolute fortune versus the money you're paying for clinics. And then we get into, as Steve said, the, the sports TRT, which can easily be three, 400 milligrams a week. And people would use low dose, for most of the year, and then when they quote-unquote go on cycle or when they push it up to the upper levels, 
when you are effectively arguably on cycle, then there's definitely then probably an arguable need for an AI to be included. So it's one of those, again, it's there. They've got to stipulate as it comes as a single source ingredient. You can run that at between 100 and 200 milligrams a week, not needing AI. Or if you do need an AI, here's a product where that's been included. And like Steve says, that, that I would argue again, that Steve's on point when we talked about forgetting. Uh, I'm the cycle that I'm on right now, Steve. Again, I'm, I'm using half a milligram of an AI and it's every four or five days. So I have to, I've got the pills on my desk and I have to remember to take it at that particular time. Here's, I don't have to think about it. The work's been done for me. And that's again the reason why companies produce blends. So I think the the sports TRT analogy that Steve's given is is on point here, and it'll just be a question of making sure that you. I, I think here, Steve, every four days, every five days, if you're doing 400 milligrams a week, uh, works out perfect for most users here. Yep, yep, and um, yep, that's. It's yeah, it's pretty simple. And at the end of the day, you're gonna have to adjust this based on blood work if you're gonna go this way. And at the end of the day, if it's not for you, then just you know, just get the individual testosterone and run it that way, or get one of these other blends and don't do the AI with it. But like at the end of the day, you don't want to end up with estrogen problems. You don't want to end up having gyno, you don't want to end up with water retention and high blood pressure and all these other side effects of high estrogen. So at the end of the day, you know, if you are doing TRT and you're running your, your testosterone too high, yes. then you're going to need an AI to bring your estrogen back down. But you're also causing yeah. other issues. So bear that in mind. I always tell people TRT is not about let's jack up my testosterone yes. as high as I can go. Yes. It's about doing it the right way. So this is something you're going to have to you know look into. Yeah. Just on that subject before we move on, Steve, we, we see this happen a lot when it comes to TRT. And it's probably... We could probably do a show in and of itself just on this particular subject. I think what sometimes happens here is when we're on PED type forms of the kind that you and I are on, we the TRT has become something in and of itself. The original concept, the way most doctors, etc., would treat you, the way most of the proper clinics with good doctors, good team of people is. And I'll use the NHS here in this country as an example, Steve. It should be just to give you the testosterone levels that you had before. It's not about training and having a great looking pair of arms and a good chest and broad shoulders and a tiny waist. It's not about allowing you to go to the gym and kick, kick ass and get the girls and all that kind of stuff. It really isn't. It's literally about how you feel as a man and giving you a little bit of, you know, if you're 50 years of age, making you feel like you're 30 and giving you a little bit more get up and go. And honestly, those numbers in those situations tend to be, as I said, 90 to 120 milligrams a week. So what we've seen via PED forums is we've gone away from that and 200 becomes very, very common. The same thing with the AI thing, I'd agree with Steve. I've seen still now, and it used to be a big thing 10, 15, 20 years ago where people said, or I wait till I've got a problem. I don't want any problems at all, Steve. I don't want to wait until I've got going. I don't want to wait until I've got estrogen issues. I don't want to wait until I'm bloated the fuck. Why? Why do I want to wait for those things to happen? What am I leaving on the table? Am I leaving 5% of my gains? Then fuck it, I'll leave 5% on the table so I don't have to deal with those issues. So again, this product's got that done for you. I I, I don't want to wait until there are any You want to wait till you get a, a stroke? And, oh, then, man, yeah. and then you're going to spend the next two years miserable on heart medication and you're going or to be depressed to over what you my guy are in hospital or wearing a fucking uh, bra, Steve. I do not wait. And I don't. Some users, more experienced and very sort of analytical, will have the tiniest, and I mean the tiniest of indicators of when they might feel used to use AI. The vast majority of users aren't that experienced or aren't that sensitive to their own particular requirements. And so sometimes you're going to get an issue where it's gone out of hand or it is a, a proper issue, medically speaking, whether it's blood, blood pressure, water retention or whatever else. And you shouldn't be in that situation. That's kind of like you almost fucked up. So I'd much rather, in my mind, in terms of using an AI, is on day one. And all I have then to do, Steve, is work out how often I'm going to use the AI 
on how much, but it's still in there from, from day one on a cycle. I don't, I'm not leaking anything on the table. I'm not going to get much bigger. I'm not going to get much stronger. I don't want to wait until I've got issues or, or any more issues in the world to go, Steve, and make it life more complicated and then having to do with a long term sort of situation in that regards. So for me, an AI from day one makes my sense. And again, the work has been done for you in that particular regards. The next one, try Trend 200, which is Trend Ace. 50 milligrams, trend in amphate, 100 milligrams, trend hex, 50 milligrams. Look, when it comes to the trend lovers, trend is God, trend is gold. I've quoted these sort of uh, sayings before. And you know, you absolutely know that when you're on trend, you are strong as fuck. The recomposition effects of trend are incredibly well known. If you can handle the side effects of trend again, then you go, we, we, we almost see it as a joke. But it's true for those people where trend is in every cycle they do. Even the quote unquote side effects is sort of, sort of slightly toxic feeling. And I use myself as an example here of being on trend appeals to these users. And we know trend works. Steve's talked about how crazy strong he's got. I have mentioned earlier on that the, the uh, fast rip type products included a small amount of uh, trend. And by recomposition. So I can say recomposition on trend 100%. Steve can say being strong on trend 100%. And there's that people out there saying that they can eat almost poorly and still get great results. But of course, their results would be so much better if they ate clean and had on point nutrition. So in those examples, if you're a fanboy, if you love trend, if you know trend works for you, and even if you don't like the, the way that you feel on it, but the end result is worth the effort then the idea that a company put together a, a combination of S as a trend has to appeal to you. And I would actually argue here, Steve, again, this is one of those ones. That if you're a trend lover, you're going to see this one sell. You're going you're gonna to have this in your stack because it is a short, medium, and long-acting version of trend working from day one, working in a week's time, working in two or three weeks' time. And making it easy for you. The actual overall number, 200 milligrams, Steve and I was having a bit of back and forth with the listeners earlier on, Steve, when we talked about the amount of trend per week. Would you run this on its own, Steve, or would you include something else to go with it? And how would you use it? So, I mean, look, if you're a trend lover, this is one, If uh, let's say you already use Ace, you've already used E, and you're like, where do I go from here? I like trend, I want to run trend again. You know, where do I go from here? Do I go and switch back to Ace? What do I do? So this is a great opportunity for you to run all three and really uh, all three esters together and see, you know, that different synergy of the esters hitting your body at different times, yada, yada, yada. So a lot of people like this for that reason. So, um, you know, you can run it by itself. You can stack in a Pharmaco uh, Anovar or Pharmaco T-Bowl in it. So really it's very versatile. You can cut on it, you can recomp, you can build strength, you can build mass. There's lots of different ways to use trend some people who use a little testosterone with it so it just depends on what, what you're trying to accomplish i wouldn't say um there's any wrong way to do it monster and um you know i'd recommend if you've never done trend by itself to try trend by itself this way you can just enjoy the trend results without inter interference you start adding testosterone to it now you're adding in the estrogenic effects you're adding in more energetic energetic effects you're getting more side effects so just, just doing the trend like this would be a good option. So the next one is try Ester Test 400. And this is a combination of Test SIP 100, Test E 100, Test Decanate 200. So very long Ester. So this is a long Ester testosterone. So this is good for longer cycles or TRT. And again, it's 400 per, per, per CC. So on this one, you'd want to do one CC every two weeks or one CC every three weeks. And then that would, you know, that would be, so if you're doing a 20 week cycle or 25 week cycle, you're cruising for the whole six months or cruising for a year, or you're doing TRT on your own, this would be an option for you. But I want to run something like this. If you were doing just like a 12 week cycle, it doesn't make any sense because half of it is that extremely long decanate ester. Now, the next one is at SUS250, but this is very different than what you would find with other sustenons because it has probe 50, phenylpropionate 50, ISO 50, and test detonate 100. So 
this is an, a very interesting and simple blend of Sussanon, which is very different than the Sussanon that you see out there. Um, because they have different, the, the ratios are, are moved around on this one. Yes. So this one, again, would be something you would do, um, again, for a longer cycle or cruising or self-TRT. This would be an option for that. But it's a really, really interesting one. And then the last one is called Super Bolin 400. So this is the Master on E100, Train E100, and Test E200. So again, this one is a, an NFA esters, which can be injected once or twice a week, no problem. But it's half of it is testosterone, a quarter of it is trend, and quarter of it is masteron. So it's, it's similar to what we talked about earlier when it came to Androbol in 400. But in that case, instead of Primo at 100, 25% of it, it's going to be trend instead of the Primo. So this one would be a good one for those of you who like a test heavier cycle where you can do recomping and really harden up. So this one I would do, I wouldn't run this one unless you are less than 11% body fat. But if you're less than 11% body fat and you want to do a nice recomp, this would be a good option for you. Mobster? Yeah, again, this is one of those ones where we could recommend different choices of different products based on the condition that you were in when you started. It's the reason why sometimes when we're on the forums, when we got the logs, uh, people will guesstimate their body fat percentage. And I've got to be honest, Steve, most of the time it's going to be to look, they, they underestimate what they've got. And the reason why sometimes we'll say, Can, let's have a look, let's see how you are. Let's see what your genetics are like. Let's see what your body fat percentage is. There are the occasional handful of people that have body fat that stays around the lower abs and hips, and yet they can be relatively lean elsewhere. Then they haven't got a lot of work to do. It's just a little bit more polishing. And you have the flexibility of using a product that suits that body fat percentage. Like Steve said, I'll quote this again and again and again when we talk about Masteron. Um, you know, the, the ability for Masteron to harden muscles up, but we can't see what you've got. What's the point? versus the ability for Masteron to free up free, more free testosterone and the booster cycle. And, you know, so it comes down to body fat percentages. And again, it's allowing for people with different conditions with all these different stacks and these different blends put together, different condition, different places on cycle, the aims of the cycle, the work they've got to do, and there's the flexibility of products in, products out, Steve. So that absolutely makes sense to me. I want to talk a little bit now, Steve, about specifically PharmaQ itself. When we talk about companies, why we rate certain companies above other companies, why some companies last in the business versus companies that are seen and gone. Just talked about it with a buddy again the other day, local lab that was nine months. Uh, companies that we've seen come and go, legendary companies that we've seen come and go back in the day where literally just the owners were splitting up and products were all over the place. And you end up with three versions of the same company. Companies tend to last if they're producing solid products, whether that's a blend or single source. Companies tend to last if the review of feedback by users is things like post-injection pain minimal. That comes with the same quality ratios, the same proper oils being used. We've seen, and this is absolutely fucked up, Steve, we think back in the day, come up with examples of companies that were using peanut oil, and you're like, so... <laughs> arguably the most allergic oil you could possibly use and it was probably cheap as fuck so they used it versus for example the majority of companies now like pharmacure using grapeseed oil why because it has the least allergic response we've seen occasionally lazy labs get the ratio of benzoyl alcohol wrong it hasn't caused any particular problems it's just a bit more of a post-injection pain sting but getting the ratio right and using the right oil minimizes post-injection pain quality of products going in the quality of raws going in testing in-house external labs and then tested by the customers themselves and the best test that it's got to be the end user steve where the end user has brought a product from a reseller directly whatever not relying on a test that the lab the company itself produced not not relying on a product that's been sent chosen perhaps hand-picked even from the product line by the company and sent to an independent lab, but tested by the end user themselves. And then ultimately, Steve, you get into the actual end user results because that's really what matters. It's all well and good having no post-injection pain, smooth oils, high quality ingredients going in, but it would matter 
if users didn't get the results. If they wanted to get lean and they dieted like a motherfucker, did their cardio religiously and didn't see results, that would matter. If they wanted to get strong and they didn't get strong, even though they were working their asses off and eating right, and all the other different things that we use PEDs for. So ultimately, you get down to stuff like that. And another things, like I said before, Steve, you don't get to last. And what do I mean by last? We're starting to do reviews and product descriptions, etc. labs that have been 10 years, 13 years, 27 years, I think is one example. To, to last, especially when it comes to PEDs, five years, 10 years, 15 years plus in the business, that's incredibly competitive. Pricing, product description, different blends, etc. To last that long is a big fucking deal. There are companies we can go on Reddit and Twitter, God knows where else, Steve, five years ago, two, three years ago, and a company that everybody was raving about, been and gone. They produced absolutely amazing products to begin with, and then they got lazy. They started shortcutting. Lab tests started to come back. The lab tests at the beginning were the product was overdosed, then it was dosed properly, and then it was underdosed, and then it just didn't work full stop. Steve and I have talked about products that we've had in the past given to me for free, Steve, ironically, one example, that absolutely had no ingredient in Beyond the Filler whatsoever, I think in one example. So it did nothing, what, none, nothing whatsoever. And the moment a legitimate product turned up, I literally, it was d I literally started gaining straight away, four pounds in four days from the Friday to, to the Monday, four pounds, Whereas the previous six or seven days, using up a little bit of product that had been given to me for free, did nothing whatsoever. So we've had that experience. We've seen, for example, back in the day, people with abscesses and problems with injections and whatever else. We've seen the lab tests come and go. We've seen independent lab tests by customs. So you start to get that going on. Then you look at silly things, and I've talked about this before, Steve. It shouldn't make a difference, but it does. You wouldn't buy a jar of jam or peanut butter in the supermarket if the label's wonky. Because you'll be thinking, if they can't get the fucking label right, God knows what's in that jar of jam, what's in that jar of peanut butter. And I, yeah, I've seen companies where they've put on their website products where the label wasn't fucking straight. If that's the best example you've got, Steve, why the fuck would I buy from you? So you want products that look pharmaceutical quality, have been tested and proven as pharmaceutical quality, lasting four years in the marketplace, producing products that people use and have success with. What do you think on that, Steve? Why would you use Pharmacro and why would you recommend it? Look, and at the, the bottom line is this. When you order from Pharmacro, you're getting great, great shipping. You're going to get great prices, great service. You know you're going to get what you order, and that's key. Absolutely, Steve. And listen, guys, the company that I'm looking at, the, the way that we looked at the products today, the person in so just the reseller I'm thinking of, Steve, has great feedback just for his customer service. Are there any issues? How good was the customer? How how any problems? How quickly was they dealt with? What's the shipping like? Is it got too fast? Was it well packed? International or domestic? It makes a difference. So we look for those kind of things all the time. Listen, come on the forums, check out the reviews, check out the Pharmacu logs. Look at what results people have got. Let us know your thoughts on the subject in the comments below or in the forums. We want to hear, have you had great results? Have you run any of the blends? What kind of success you had with the blends? Please note, we are not doctors and opinions are ours. It is our view based on our experience of views on the topic and podcasts for informational purposes and entertainment only. The freedom of speech and the First Amendment apply.